If you're confused about the endless symbols on SD cards these days, you're not alone. After 25 years of evolution, these cards have more classifications than ever. I've done a deep dive to uncover what each icon means. And in today's video, I'm breaking down the secrets behind each of the symbols so you can choose the right SD card for your needs without overspending on specifications that you don't need. So let's dive in. So SD stands for Secure Digital. So SD cards are secure digital cards and they were launched in August 1999 and primarily used in digital cameras at the time, which was just the very beginning of the evolution of digital cameras. So back then, digital cameras produced image files around one megabyte in size. And so if you had a, for example, 64 megabyte SD card, at the time you would have been able to store around 64 images. But over the last 25 years, as I'm sure you know, digital cameras have increased in capability exponentially. And so for example, uh, my Leica Q2 produces files that are roughly 87 megabytes in size. And what that means is if I had a 32 megabyte SD card from 1999 or a 64 megabyte SD card, I wouldn't even be able to fit one image on that card. So the capacity of the cards has increased a lot over the last few decades. And it's now not uncommon to see card sizes of 128 gigabytes or 256 or even 512 gigabytes, which is thousands of times bigger than the original cards from 1999. But that's not all that's changed over the years. The speed at which cameras can write to the cards has increased a lot as well. And while capacity is probably a very simple concept to understand, and most of us find it very easy to decide what size of card they want, it's the speed that really can be very, very confusing, especially with all the different categorizations that are labeled on the card. But before we go into the speed aspect of SD cards, let me just summarize for you the different categories of cards in terms of the capacity. So the earliest cards were just called SD cards or SDSC for standard capacity. And these were able to store data up to a maximum of two gigabyte. Then in 2006, they launched the SDHC category of SD cards, and these had a capacity of up to 32 gigabytes. But one other limitation of these cards is that they could store a maximum file size of just four gigabytes. And what that means is if you're shooting video, for example, and the video file size exceeds four gigabytes, the files will be divided up into several pieces. So for example, if you're video was six gigabytes in length, it would cut the file at four gigabytes and then make a new file of two gigabytes. And you'd have to join those two files together to get six gigabytes uh, when you're doing the editing. So that's a limitation of the S SDHC classification of cards. So then in 2009, a new category of SD card came out, which was the XDXC, which, is, which stands for SD extended capacity. And these went up all the way to two terabytes of storage which is quite a lot even by today's standards. So for example, the biggest cards I'm using even today in 2024 are 128 gigabyte SD cards. But apart from the increased capacity of the SDXC cards, there was one other benefit that it had over the older SDHC cards, which is there is no limit in terms of the file size. So it's not limited to just four gigabytes. So I'm actually using one of these cards right now. And what that means is that when I make YouTube videos like this one, I don't have to worry about the files being chopped up into smaller file sizes. It's just one big file. Uh, there's no limit up until the limit of the total capacity of the card. And then in 2018, they introduced the SDUC category of cards. Uh, UC stands for ultra capacity. And these have a theoretical maximum capacity of up to 128 terabytes, which is absolutely massive. But as I say, this is theoretical because at this present moment in time, there is no such thing as a 128 terabyte SD card. And for all intents and purposes, realistically, most of us are not going to be considering the SDUC cards because they're quite rare and they're going to be quite expensive. And more importantly, they're not going to be required or necessary for the kind of work that we're doing with today's cameras. And so the most common type of card that we will be thinking about these days with our modern cameras is probably going to be the SDXC extended capacity range. So up to around two terabytes, which is more than enough for most people. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about the speed. Now there are two different kinds of speeds that are relevant for us here. One is the read speed, which is the speed at which data from the card can be read. So for example, when you're copying the images from your card to your computer, it's the speed at which the computer can read that information and transfer it from the card to the computer. And for most people, the read speed is not going to be that important because even if it took quite a long time, you could just go and make yourself a cup of tea uh, while it's downloading and come back in a few minutes. It's not really going to be life or death if it takes a little bit longer. On the other hand, the write speed, which is the speed at which information can be written 
by the camera onto the card is very, very important depending on what you're doing, especially if you're doing video. If the camera is right, trying to write information faster than the card can actually accept that information, then there's going to be problems and you'll find dropped frames or all sorts of issues could happen if you're using a card that can't cope with the information that's being written by the camera. Now, most SD cards will have a speed printed on the label, and often it's just one speed. And in those situations, it could be something like 95 megabytes per second, or 170 megabytes per second, or 200 megabytes per second. And in most cases, this is actually the read speed, not the write speed. And this is very, very important to note. Some card manufacturers do put two different speeds. They put the read speed and the write speed, and you'll see normally the, the write speed will be slower than the read speed. But the reason many card manufacturers only put the read speed on the label is because the read speed is a lot faster and it just makes the card look a lot better than it actually is. So really it's a marketing gimmick. And so if there's only one number there and it's the read speed, then you're gonna have to find a different way to find out what is the write speed of that card. And that's the more important bit of information as I've already mentioned. So the first classification and maybe the oldest one is called the speed class. And that's usually indicated by what looks like a letter C with a number inside it. And that number could be the two, four, six, or 10. So if it's a two, it means that the card is able to have a sustained write speed of two megabytes per second. And so if it's a four, then it's four megabytes. If it's a six, it's six megabytes. And if it's a 10, it means that it can have a sustained write speed of 10 megabytes per second. But this is a very old classification. And so 10 is the maximum. So even if the card can read it faster than 10 megabytes per second, it'll still say C10, because under this classification, there is nothing higher than a 10. So in a sense, this out dated classification is less useful and not really something that we'll be using when we're making our purchasing decision. So a more recent classification is what's called the UHS speed class. And in this classification, there are only two categories and the speed is represented by what looks like a letter U with a number inside. And the number is usually either a one or a three. That's it. There's only two categories. So if it has a one, it means that the card has a minimum write speed of 10 megabytes per second. And if it has a three, then it means a minimum write speed of 30 megabytes per second. And later on in this video, I'll explain how you can determine what you, whether you need a 10 megabyte or a 30 megabyte write speed for your specific camera. And then I think most recently, a new categorization has been added, which is the video speed class. And this is symbolized by what looks like a letter V followed by a number, which is either a six, a 10, a 30, a 60, or a 90. And what do those numbers mean? So if it's a V6, it means that the card has a sustained write speed of six megabytes per second. So V10 is 10 megabytes, V30 is 30 megabytes, V60 is 60 megabytes, and V90 means that it has a sustained write speed of 90 megabytes per second, which is very, very fast. And most people will not need that for video uh, unless they're shooting in 8K, which is very, very rare. 4K is already very, very high definition. And that's really all the different speed classes. But there is one other thing that's related to speed, which is called the bus speed. And this is something that is also very useful to understand because it may impact your decision as to what card to get. So most modern cards, they're either going to be a UHS-1 or a UHS-2 bus speed class of SD card. And this is actually a physical hardware classification because what you'll notice if you look on the back of an SD card is that a UHS-1 SD card has just one row of electronic pins, which is used to transmit data to the to and from the device. A UHS-2 card actually has two rows of electronic pins on the back of the card. And so it can transmit and receive data a lot faster than those with just a single row. And occasionally, rather than writing UHS-1 or UHS-2, the bus speed is represented by just a single Roman numeral, either a, a one or a two in Roman numerals. And that's how you know whether it's a UHS-1 or a UHS-2. But if you're not sure, you can tell by looking on the back whether it's a UHS-1 or whether it's a UHS-2. Although it could also be a UHS-3, UHS-3 cards are quite rare, so I'm not gonna talk about those too much today but they also have two rows of pins, just like the UHS-2. So UHS-3, as I mentioned, quite rare, but also very unlikely to see the light of day in the future because it seems to have been uh, overtaken by what's known as SD Express, which is yet another new form of SD card. Uh, and again, I'm not gonna talk about that too much because those are probably beyond the requirements of most of the people watching this video. And finally on speed, I'm just gonna mention one more thing. There are still cards occasionally that you'll see that have a number followed by an X on the label. So something like 1667X, which means 
1667 times faster. But faster than what? Well, it's actually faster than the very first CD-ROM, which had a standard data transfer speed of just 150 kilobytes. So going back to my example of a, a card that has 1667 times written on it, it's 1667 1, times faster than 150 kilobytes per second, which actually ends up being 250 megabytes per second. So that's quite a fast card. But ultimately, this form of labeling is also another marketing gimmick, which really doesn't make a lot of sense to compare it with a technology such as CD-ROM, which was uh, really something that was used decades ago. But it does sound very nice, doesn't it? When you see it on the card that it says 1,666 or 67 times faster, you immediately might think, well, that's a really fast card. So before I go on to talk about which card you should choose for your specific needs, I wanted to just cover one more source of a lot of confusion amongst consumers and that's to do with the the way that the speed is measured so going back to the sd cards the speed is usually expressed in terms of megabytes per second so 250 megabytes per second 100 megabytes per second and so on but to make matters more confusing camera manufacturers tend to express the speed at which their cameras write data to cards in terms of megabits per second not megabytes and i've seen on a lot of forums people getting very confused because they're saying well my camera writes at 100 megabits per second. So does that mean I need an SD card that can have a write speed of 100 megabytes per second? And the answer is absolutely not. So there are actually eight megabits in one megabyte. And so in order to really do the conversion, you need to divide the number of megabits by eight to find out what would be the megabyte equivalent. So my Sony ZV-1 actually writes data at 4K at a speed of 100 megabits per second. But if I divide that by eight, that works out at 12.5 megabytes per second. So what that means is, if I use an SD card that has a write speed of 10 megabytes per second, because my camera is writing information at 12.5 megabytes per second, it's going to be a little bit of an issue. On the other hand, if I have a card with a write speed of 30 megabytes per second, and my camera is writing data to the card at 12.5 megabytes per second or 100 megabits per second then you can see that that SD card is going to cope very very comfortably because there's quite a lot of headroom there it's writing at 12.5 megabytes per second but it's capable of writing at 30 megabytes per second so in other words for my specific camera I would never need anything more than a write speed of 30 megabytes per second so a v60 or a v90 would be way way more than I would need for 4k video and if you're taking pictures the requirement is even less and so let's go on to the final section which is really what card should you use or what card should you buy for your specific usage so first of all in terms of capacity so i i use a leica q2 which has huge file sizes they're about 87 or 88 megabytes per file and i use a 128 gigabyte card which is quite a high capacity card for still photos but that's because my camera has a very high megapixel uh, output and I get around 1400 pictures uh, per card which is a lot I don't usually need more than that because I only ever need to shoot normally for a maximum of one day and then I'll come home and I'll copy all the files to my computer and then I can erase the card and start again so for me 128 gigabytes is actually a lot and for most people with a camera uh, with file sizes of less than 88 gig uh, megabytes per file uh, you'd probably get away with just a 64 gigabyte card it's probably more than enough for most people and in terms of video well I'm using a 128 gigabyte v30 card which is again more than enough for what i need so 30 megabytes per second write speed my camera is only capable of a maximum of 12.5 megabytes per second writing data to the card so i will never need more than that and i'm recording in 4k which is very very high definition and unless i was recording in 8k with a more sophisticated camera i would never need to buy a v60 or a v90 card which are a lot more expensive and in terms of capacity the 128 gigabyte card uh, gets me around two and a half hours of footage which is again more than enough i only ever record uh, youtube videos at home uh, they're normally around 15 20 minutes per video so i would even the 128 gigabyte card is more than I need. But this really depends on your usage. If you're shooting a lot of vlogs outdoors on holiday, uh, doing lots of travel videos, uh, you, you may find that 128 gigabytes is used up very, very quickly and you may need a bigger capacity or more cards. And that's a decision that you, only you can make. And so if you're mainly just doing photography, uh, in terms of 
uh, right speed, I would say actually you don't need a very fast right speed at all. I'm doing mainly street photography. It's usually just one frame at a time. And so even a very, very low speed of V10, uh, 10 megabytes per second would be more than enough for me. And I think more than enough for most photographers, unless you're quite specialized, for example, doing uh, sports photography with lots of burst mode pictures, 40 frames per second, you may need a slightly faster card to prevent you having to wait for the buffer each time you've done a burst of photos. But if you're not generally shooting 4K video or 8K video uh, and mainly just doing still photographs, in general, I don't think you'd need more than a C10, which is a U1, a UHS-1 V10 category of card. And so there you have it. It's all summarized, I think, quite nicely in this little chart here. So hopefully you now understand fully what all the different symbols on the SD cards mean, and you're able to then make an informed decision about which card you need for your specific usage. And very importantly, you won't be spending money unnecessarily on cards that are far more higher spec than you actually need for your usage. So I hope you found that useful. If you do have any other questions, please feel free to leave those questions in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them as best I can. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.